everyone, this is Sarah Berman with Practically Writing. Today we're going to be talking about how to write great endings. As usual, don't forget to stick around for the announcements at the end of the show. But in the meantime, let's get started. I don't know why I pointed it that way. Now there are a few things that are obviously extremely specific to a story and the ending is one of those things. So it's kind of hard to generalize what a good ending is, but the tips that I'm going to be giving you today are specifically about these general things. Don't be afraid to throw any of these tips out. They're only guidelines, they're not rules, and what your story calls for is far more important than these but they can give you some good ideas for endings. The first thing you need to take into account is my old favorite, genre. Now this can be a little bit of a chicken in the egg scenario in the sense that you can actually change the genre based on what kind of ending you pick or you can pick your ending based on the genre that you're going for. The big thing to note is that there are certain genres that require certain kinds of endings. If you do not do a happily ever after or happily for now ending, then you're not writing a romance no matter how hard you try. So you need to, if you're, if you're going for romance, you have to write a happily, a happy ending. Okay, you have to write the happy ending. The boy gets the girl, the girl gets the boy, you know, they all live happily ever after in a little picket fence thing or you know they ride off into the sunset and who knows what happens after that does not matter there needs to be a happy ending though on the other hand things like science fiction can tend to have more of a stepping into a new world kind of ending and this can be done by either discovering a new world or discovering a secret aspect to one's own world or changing the world they live in any one of those works but a, a positive ending in a sci-fi tends to fall into those three the uh, hero's journey ending is about returning to the beginning changed but this you know in, in kind of the same space ish so um more of a spiral than a full circle but you, you return to more or less the same place you were before, only you are changed drastically on the inside. That's the hero's journey. There are different variations on that. You know, Star Wars is used really commonly as a description of the hero's journey, and I'm talking about A New Hope, the first movie. He doesn't really turn return to where he was, but he returns to a place of stability and of welcoming and of home so in a lot of ways yes one thing that a lot of people like to do is to answer the question that is posed in the beginning it tends to be a little easier to do that in short stories because essentially we're, we're no longer interested in the same things that we were in the beginning in film noir it's called a MacGuffin which is you know the the thing that initiates all of the action but isn't actually the goal so like the Maltese Falcon and this is a really great way to initiate a story that is about someone who didn't want to take the journey and really doesn't feel the need to you know it's, it's not like they're forced necessarily to take that journey or at least they wouldn't have been had they not gotten involved via the MacGuffin I actually used this technique in Too Weird by having uh, Nicola look for her stepsister because there's absolutely no way she would have even bought into the whole the world is going to end, there are demons, there are gods, you know, she'd have been like, what, no, mm -mm, I'm staying home, thanks. So you know, she had to be brought in through a kind of side door, the MacGuffin door. So that's, it, because of that, there 
is no way to answer the question that was posed at the beginning because the question was essentially a it was a leading question it was clickbait you could call it clickbait you know using that technique is also common uh, answering the question that was posed in the beginning is common but there are certain things that an ending must do or else it's not a satisfactory ending the first thing that an ending must do is create a sense of resolution. That doesn't mean you have to resolve everything. There can be a few little hanging tidbits, whether because it's a series and you need those hanging tidbits for later, or because they simply aren't relevant enough to clean up. That can be a difficult choice to make, but I've seen it happen and sometimes it works. Another characteristic that an ending must have is that the main conflict must be over. Of course, that means that there is a distinct main conflict. There kind of should be, even if it's like a metaphorical conflict, but there, there should be some sort of thing that is completed. It can be everything from you know, two people who've been flirty and struggling with trust issues have all of their secrets spilled to each other and they have to essentially get through that. That is more of a, an emotional, psychological kind of conflict, but it's still there. In other cases, it's about achieving a specific goal. For the rune spells, obviously, getting a hold of one or more rune spells is the goal and surviving somehow but yeah you want to tie up all the loose ends you want to you know merge threads back into the story if they're not going anywhere and you want to make sure that any conflicts are resolved satisfactorily that does not necessarily mean that they are resolved in a positive or happily ever after type of ending you can torture people and still have it be satisfying in some ways, and in a lot of cases, especially when you're dealing with series and especially when you're dealing with something that's a little bit darker, you actually want to have the ending make things a little bit worse. I have a character who has PTSD, Nicola from the Rune Spells. She has PTSD because of the events of the first two books. So in the third book, I add in an ending that is actually quite traumatic for her. So even though it resolves satisfactorily and even though in a lot of ways there was no other choice, she is still going to have to deal with that. It does not necessarily make things better, it just resolves the situation. You can always use that. I'm always a big fan of tormenting your characters even more. Yay! One thing that I think that a lot of people don't think about consciously is how the ending is going to leave their character. And when I say leave their character, I mean ideally you're creating some sort of fandom. You know, people who enjoy your book or books, series, you know, whatever. Do you want them to be looking forward to further adventures of Greg McGregory, the Highland Vampire? Do you want them to see Greg as a hero? Do you want them to see him as an anti-hero? If you think about this consciously, then you can skew your ending towards the, you know, kind of final feel that people are going to have towards this, you know, this character. And by doing that, you actually can create the kind of character that you want regardless because I know how it is sometimes plots get away from you sometimes things happen that you did not expect you can still tweak things and make them realistic and yet give a certain final emotional impact and this can be anything from you know letting people know that poor Greg McGregory was devastated by the fact that he had to let his best friend die in order to save the world or you know whatever 
showing the effects is a great way to increase empathy for a character and humanize them. Um, impossible choices are really popular and I highly recommend them because they give tension like no other and impossible choices don't have to be you know your best friend or the end of the world it it does not have to be that drastic it can be um, you know staying in a loveless marriage for the kids or getting a divorce that can that can be an impossible choice there are a few things that you probably want to avoid in your ending. These are things that I tend to pick up on and that I am particularly adverse to as a reader, but I know I'm not the only one. So the first one is Dies Ex Machina. Okay, it means God in the machine. It can take the form of a super powerful being swooping in at the last minute and saving everyone. <sighs> Yeah, I like to see people struggle, and I want to see people struggle, and if they're going to succeed, I want to see them succeed on their own efforts. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, they have to do it all by themselves, but a super powerful being that could have probably taken care of the whole thing just swoops in and cleans up all the mess afterwards. Really? Really? It feels disingenuous and unsatisfactory. Uh, the other thing is, and I've I've seen this happen a couple of times, particularly in science fiction, and that is a previously either unknown or unworkable technology all of a sudden works just in time to keep, you know, the main character or main characters or whatever from having to deal with the full effects of the consequences of their choices. Yeah. No. I like consequences. I like it when people suffer the consequences of their choices. It makes it better. The other thing that really annoys me, and this is more for romance type of novels, is when most of the conflict revolves around, you know, like families not approving or something like that, and then something drastic happens, and they get through it, and then, oh look, the family just changed its mind and now they're okay with the situation. I, I have seen people, you know, literally willing to fight to the death over whether or not a certain kind of cheese is spicy or something else ridiculous that is also quite arbitrary. People don't change their minds about their opinions like that. People just do not do that. Not often and not without reason. Just don't. You, you, you have to give us more than that. You give them some, some reason, some motivation for why they're changing their mind. And something strong, too, because, you know, hello politics, people will die for rather insignificant beliefs. That, of course, is the author's individual choice. Those are just things that tend to annoy me. Okay, so here's my super secret tip. When you get to the end, you kind of know how it needs to resolve. Try to come up with the most shocking way that that can happen and then do that. Or at least, you know, walk through it and see if it makes sense. Because that is a really great way to nail it down. You know, somebody needs to be put in jail for the rest of their lives or else they're just going to continue making the entire thing a mess and you're going to have to deal with you know, trying to get him into jail because, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere and there's really no proof and blah blah blah. Okay, well, you've defeated the bad guy. You have to take him to jail. Or you can pop a cap in him. Guess which one I choose. <laughs> Sometimes the more shocking and surprising version of the ending is the better one. And I highly recommend at least considering that a lot. So there's my super secret. So announcements. Oh my gosh, I've been so busy the last couple of weeks, so I haven't gotten a lot done, but I have gotten myself organized. And that includes next episode, which is the uh, third quarter quarterly goals which also includes the third quarter announcement for the third quarter uh, Patreon swag giveaway. So if you're not one of my patrons on Patreon, 
you better hurry up and get yourself entered into that giveaway. So I am finishing up my second quarter goals and uh, getting ready to do that video, which will be next week because yes, I did miss a week. Yes, I understand. Dude, it was 4th of July. The kids have been home. There's been summer camp up one side and down the other. Swimming lessons. And I had a few deadlines right all around the same time. Plus, I was dealing with the one month post of my husband breaking my van. And in case you, you don't really understand that, because I don't know why you even would, uh, we had to get a new van. And... So we had to get all of the registration and everything figured out and that happened right around the same time that rent was due and oh my gosh, I am not an accountant but I could be. Money, 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 must be funny in the rich man's world. In addition to all of that, I have a workshop thing that I'm doing in August. I have a workshop that I'm doing at the Nebraska Writers Guild Fall Conference in uh, October, I think it is, October. So I am prepping for those, plus I have, I know, I said I was going to cut back on them, but I have three anthologies that I have stories to write for by the holiday season. Plus, I was going to try and get another standalone done, like full-length novel, plus Everyone knows what November is. NaNoWriMo's coming. So that means another Rune Spells book. <sighs> um, the point is I have so many things to do. Please send me um, relaxation items because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to give you a little preview as to the goals show. One of my goals was to get a massage which literally should have been the easiest goal on that list, and I didn't do it. <sighs> I'm going to be busy. It'll be fun. No, it won't. That is all for now. You can show your love of this video by the, the thumbing upping thing and your love of this channel by the bell ringing thingy and the subscribey thingy and, you know, do all of that so you continue to see more of my little tips and tricks. Don't forget you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Oh, and I'm on BookBub. You can still get copies of my books to Weird and Fluffy Bunny, as well as all of the anthologies and some of the short stories from the anthologies and some more short stories and the Lena Grace line. And all of that is on Amazon under my name or under Lena Grace if you're looking for the Lena Grace line. Links are all below, and we'll see y'all next time. That's all, folks. <laughs> Can't believe I managed to do that. Probably not politics. Scratch that. Politics sucks. I highly recommend killing people, like, as much as possible. It just tends to work better. <laughs> I am the walrus. Cuckoo, 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 cuckoo.